you'll see on Mars. All right. Um, on Mars, uh, with this telescope, you'll be able to see uh, the polar ice caps. Uh, you will also see some uh, dark uh, maria features on, on the surface of Mars. Uh, if, if conditions are good, you can actually start to see some topographic features, uh, such as Olympus Mons, uh, uh, there's surface major and large bold features that you can see. Usually will appear as dark markings uh, through the telescope. There will be some color as well, kind of like a, a rust color throughout the planet. And again, the polar ice cap. The, the first thing that you would recognize through, through the camera would be the polar ice caps. Uh, and given, the, depending on the season on Mars, but, and most of the time when Mars is observable, you will see that, uh, as well as those dark features. Um, so that's, that's another great target for this telescope. Um, because this telescope has so much focal length and light gathering, those features are, are more easily detected with this one. Can one filter street light? Uh, yes. Uh, good question. And, and yes, uh, uh, street lights uh, have a few uh, emission lines, uh, primarily sodium and mercury, uh, that can be selectively filtered and that can improve the contrast and the signal to noise of the images that you obtain with the telescope. It's also important for those who look through the telescope, but it is applicable to imaging. And so uh, there are filters available for this telescope that can help filter street lights and the, and the resultant light pollution. Uh, generally, uh, this, and it is, it is optional, uh, it is particularly, it's, it's most useful when imaging emission nebulae because they're, they're, uh, they're, they're very, uh, they have also very particular emission lines. Uh, so if a nebula is a primarily a hydrogen emission line, it might be emitting a few specific colors like hydrogen alpha, hydrogen beta, oxygen three. So we can filter that very nicely. A broad spectrum object, like a galaxy, is less effective with um, light pollution filters because we're, we would be removing uh, a, a significant part of the galaxy spectrum. So if we, for example, like sodium and mercury, some, then we usually use kind of broadband filters we would be removing a big segment of the galaxy's emission if, if we used a light pollution filter. Some are still available, but uh, basically a nebula will benefit from a light pollution filter. A galaxy and many stars will not so much. Um, and so it is an optional accessory. I would say for your application, for using this telescope, it's not necessary. Um, you won't have a problem with moon and planets, but deep sky will be fine from this area, uh, the brighter deep sky objects. If you start to, to go after more elusive, uh, fainter emission nebulae that have poor contrast, that is, that is an option that um, we, you know, we can add to the telescope, a light pollution filter, which can help. But I would say for now that actually you will be just fine without using a filter.